Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. My name is Johan if you're new here and if you are a returning subscriber, thanks so much for watching again. I wanted to make a little quick video because it was actually a video that one of you guys suggested slash asked a question about. Um, one of you guys commented in one of my previous videos and asked me to talk about, you know, if I'm dating and what it's like dating now in the city that I live in. Um, as you guys know, I moved from Boston to Rhode Island. And the answer to that question very quickly is, I am not dating right now. Um, I am on one dating app and it's Tinder. I might chat with a couple people and connect with a couple people, but um, I'm not really dating at this time and I haven't dated anybody in months and months and months and months, maybe over a year at this point. Um, like many of you guys probably out there, um, <laughs> you guys understand you know, what the world is going through and it's not the right setting for me to like date. Um, and I've had a lot of life changes over the past year as well that have prevented me from doing so. But very quickly, I do want to say that I wanted to talk about my dating experience and what it was like dating in Boston. Um, I think a lot of my viewers, um, or some of my viewers, are actually in the Boston area. Um, what I'm going to mention today, it's just clearly my experience. Um, it's my judgment on what I experienced myself. It's not a summarization of what it's actually like to date in Boston. Um, and where it's going to be like to date in Boston for you, but it, I'm going to talk about what it was like for me. And I'm also going to talk about um, like my little gay life in Boston. Um, I am mostly a homebody. I do like to go out dancing um, when, you know, that was a thing. Um, right now I dance in my living room and my dog watches me. And if you guys um, didn't know, I got a, adopted a dog. Um, his name is Chase and he watches me dance like I'm a cuckoo head. Um, but I wanted to talk about those couple things, dating in Boston and kind of like my gay life in Boston as well and how I, you know, went about it. Um, so before I moved to Boston, I lived in Connecticut for many, 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 many years. Um, Connecticut will always have my heart. That's where I went to school. That's where I grew up and I, you know, formed my, a lot of my identity in Connecticut. Um, moved to Boston and one of the main reasons I wanted to move to Boston is because I wanted to kind of make more friends and I felt like if I wanted to find a husband, I, I wanted to have more options in terms of, um, you know, have a better chance of finding a husband because there weren't many out queer people in the Hartford area where I lived um, in Connecticut. So I was like, okay, Boston's more logical for me. You know, New York is fun to visit, but it's not a place where I want to uh, live. Um, and also my company who I worked for and still work for um, had an office right outside of Boston as well. So it was fairly easy for me to ask my boss if I can transfer offices and he was totally okay with that. So uh, I thank him. He's an amazing guy. He's no longer with the company, but um, he, you know, <laughs> changed the path that my life took. So when I got to Boston, uh, again, homebody, um, and I was on all the apps at that point. I was on Scrub, Grinder, Tinder, um, you know, connecting with people, um, talking with people. Obviously, I don't really love the way that people talk to me on, you know, Grinder or Scruff. Um, so it's kind of like a negative um, experience. Like I, people are not always respectful. People are not always the most kind or know their boundaries. Or you know, I just don't like the tone of communication that some people can carry on those apps. Um, for me personally, I actually uh, made a personal decision early last year to get off those apps, um, and it was a great decision. Um, I quickly downloaded the app maybe a few weeks ago um, for like 24 hours, and I was like, oh, this is like, I recalled why I got off. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm good with just Tinder for the time being, which is what I have at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, I made some connections. Um, and very quickly, not very quickly, but I made a connection, um, with a great guy. His name was, um, Tim and Tim, if you're ever watching this, um, and I think it was 20, 2019 is where we met. Yeah. That's, I moved in, in, to Boston in 2018. Um, and we met in 2019, super smart guy, really well spoken. I enjoyed his company and he unfortunately was going to move back to where he's from. He's from 
um, California. So he moved back to California. He told me uh, a couple of days in, hey, I think I'm gonna move back to California. And I chose to still hang out with him just because I enjoyed our connection so much. Um, and yeah, he eventually moved to California. Um, and you know, it, it, Tim, like in my memory, Tim like holds like a little place because he is a very great guy, very smart, very caring. Um, and you know, beyond Tim, I didn't really go on multiple dates with anybody ever again in Boston. I went on a few first dates and the first dates trends for me in Boston kind of went like this. Um, I would connect with the person, the conversation would go well. You know, mostly went on dates with people that I met on Tinder. And um, the conversation usually went really well. Um, and it tipped more on, hey, I want to be friends with this person. And I, you know, connected with them in such a friendly way. And I'm actually friends with one of those people. His name is Bill. Bill, if you're ever watching this. Um, I quickly through the chat, um, it wasn't a date when we met up, quickly through the chat, I was like, this guy's gonna be a good friend, we're still good friends. Um, but some other people, you, you felt like, oh, maybe I can connect with them in, in a romantic sense, um, but then you quickly figure out when you're meeting up that you just wanna be friends. Some people take it well, uh, some people do not take it well and don't want anything to do with you. And that's completely fine. Um, I respect their decision and I, I understand that they want to protect themselves emotionally. <laughs> they don't want um, to be around me at all uh, for not for no bad reason. They just don't want to be around me. Um, you know, on the other side, I've ex experienced that as well. I've sort of like been in situations where someone made me believe that they were very interested in me, uh, met up with me, and they just wanted to be friends. I think that the weird reason that person just wanted to be friends is because they said I was too nice. So I. They, you know, they didn't want to be pursuing anything romantic with me because I was too nice and that they only wanted to be friends with me because I was too nice. Um, I'm sure that was just an excuse for something else, but hey, I'm nice. What are you going to do about it? I'm not going to change my whole persona or the person that I am for you to like me. I'm not going to be mean, you know, just because I look a certain way. And that's another thing that kind of came back around when I was dating in Boston is that people responses when they met me was a lot of the times you you know, seem different. Oh, your personality was way different than I expected you to be when I first, um, you know, talked to you. I thought you were going to be more serious or something else. They didn't expect me to have like a good sense of humor or like be higher energy. Um, I think in a bad sense, and, and you know, when I took myself away from some of those conversations, um, that after time had passed, I realized a lot of them just perceived me to be more suave or have of swagger or they wanted me to have those things um, because of the way that I look, um, which isn't necessarily a good thing because there is some inherent sort of racism. Even within, you know, people who I did it who look exactly like me, they wanted me to be a certain way that it didn't match. And that's completely fine. I am my own person, every one of us. Um, we are different <laughs> just because you look a certain way doesn't mean we have to be a certain way either um, And I hope that people understand that um, and they learn as they grow older that just because you know Someone talks a certain way walks a certain way looks a certain way doesn't mean that it equals this personality um, When you meet up with them or when you go on dates with them just because you see their pictures doesn't mean you, it equals a certain definition of what a person should be like um, You know I you know, they didn't have a lot of bad experiences. Um, I think on the dating apps, you still see in Boston, um, even people who look like me, even, you know, black, Latino, Asian, people that would have things in their profiles that are similar to some of the guy, white guys in terms of, um, I don't want any, you know, fat people. I don't want any black, white, or Asian, sorry, black, um, Latino, or Asian. Um, they wanted someone who's white or someone they would say, I would want someone who has um, blue eyes, which again, doesn't necessarily mean, you know, white because, you know, someone like me can have blue eyes um, that looks like me, but I think, you know, what they're getting at. So you still see a lot of that in those apps, or you, I still saw a lot of that back then when I was on those apps. Um, and obviously it makes you feel other people feel bad. I, you know, if you have your thing that you're working through and you have some internal racism and you look like me and you want to say that you only want to date white guys, that's completely fine. Um, 
just don't make other people feel like, you know, no one's ever going to want them because the people around them, um, even the people that look like them are saying that we don't want you. Um, if that person has an internal racism issue that they have to go through and deal with, that's, you know, th their journey, don't put it out for other people. I would try to be as kind as you can, um, you know, as queer people were traumatized growing up, um, many of us, and what's the point of traumatizing others within our community? Um, I, I feel like there's really no point to that. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was, you know, how I made gay friends in Boston. Um, I was lucky enough that I had my friend Dean um, that I knew from undergrad um, living in Boston and kind of, you know, hung out with him a lot. Um, and I also had friends from Connecticut come visit me as well. So we were able to kind of form memories that way. I think the number one way that I made a lot of friends really was through joining gay kickball in Boston. Um, and it doesn't have to be kickball, it could be a queer you know, book club, it could be a volunteering services, um, it could be, you know, something completely different than, you know, whatever it might be, you know, a gaming club or um, trying different restaurants and you want to hang out with queer people. Whatever has an interest um, or something, you know, having an interest that you like and enjoy and when you attend something that's queer plus something you like and enjoy, you'll instantly make connections. I did get kickball because I saw one of my friend's friends play and I asked him what it was about. That's really how it came to me. Uh, I'm glad that I did it. I enjoyed the experience for the most part. I made some really good friends and obviously you pay a fee. So it's kind of like it's a fraternity when you pay to, you know, make friends. Um, but, you know, the intentions of most of those guys um, and girls are, you know, non-binary people are really good and they want to make friends and memories. Um, so, and a lot of people who join those things are, you know, a lot of times new or to Boston too, because they see it as a way to connect with other people. So you find someone who's new like you and you kind of can form a bond and a friendship. You'll know who you connect with. Obviously, you're not going to connect with everybody. Not everyone is meant to be your friend, even if you're the most holiest, nicest person in the whole world. Um, some people just won't like you just because they don't like you and there's nothing you can do about it. And that's something I've learned through just growing older. Um, but doing gay capable was amazing and I definitely recommend doing something that you're interested in and you know meeting people that way because this conversation will just flow easily and you'll just have um, things that you know will build naturally instead of forcing it and being kind of like kind of vague not important or s s dumb conversations that some people you know which is basic uh, relationship on i feel like a friendship you can talk about life you can talk about finances you can talk about your future you can talk about so many things um if you want a true friendship um uh, acquaintance i can talk about the weather i can talk about getting um you know to drive to somewhere or going to the gym some it, very small small talk with some acquaintances that i can't really go deep with my friend like if they were my friend I can go deep into any kind of conversation. We can talk for hours. Um, I mean, that's just the kind of friendships that I have. Um, but overall, um, I do want to kind of hint at you guys that, you know, my experience was mostly good. Uh, I didn't have any terrible negative experiences. I only had a couple of like experiences within the queer community where there was some kind of um, racial, you know, what's it called, frustration or, um, tension thrown at me. Um, there was, you know, a few places, a, a couple bars. I can say one for sure, trophy room, where I would go in, and it was primarily a white, you know, rent place, and, um, and you know, the people going there, and people would look at me kind of like in a disgusting kind of way, or you know, a negative way, where they didn't want me to be in their space, or they were questioning why I was in their space. I don't know why. Um, I didn't do anything to those people um, and I'm never going to understand why because I really could care less to understand why that's their own struggle to, um, you know, for them to figure out why they're giving nasty looks to certain people who look different than they are. Um, Boston, like any other, I feel like queer community is very clicky um, and it's weirdly, weirdly very clicky um, because I feel like in so many ways you can meet a lot of people if they had an open mind if they were kinder to one another um i've had literally uh, situations where people would just turn their backs on me and after having a conversation and kind of ignore me i've had um, situations where i've met people face to face and 
they would just pretend like they never met me again <laughs> after seeing them out. Um, and I don't know obviously why, but in some instances, I, I felt like there was a racial aspect to it because maybe I was the only brown person um, in the space um, or anybody who looked different in the space. Um, and, you know, that's just what my experience was. I didn't let it get to me, um, but I know that some people are maybe not as, maybe haven't built themselves up emotionally um, in the way that they look and feel in their own skin um, that can, you know, allow them to have a better experience because you can push that aside because it can really hurt people. And obviously, like I said before, those people have trauma and hurt people hurt people, but there's no reason um, to try to hurt others within our community. I mean, unless they're doing something very terrible, um, I, I, I think people should treat each other with respect and kindness, um, unless you're, I mean, bad person. Um, but, you know, overall, my experience in Boston was good. I like Boston. I love the North End. I love um, dancing at Club Cafe. If you want to go out dancing when we're able to dance inside places, um, Club Cafe would be the place where I would go on a Friday night and just go dancing with one or two of my friends. I could care less. When I am out with my friends, I could care less about meeting a guy. I want to form memories with my friends. I want to dance to the music. That's what I focus on. You know, there's a couple of places in Dorchester in Boston that I went to. One of them is D Bar. They have a karaoke night um, that my friend loves, Bill loves. Um, and I forget the name of the other place in Dorchester, but it's kind of like a dancing place too. And they have like a mirror wall. <laughs> and sometimes, um, you know, I would just dance dance when my friends were busy doing their thing with other people i would just dance with myself in a corner um uh, because i i like dancing even with you know not even having a drink or having just like a soda um again i don't drink soda very often but like having not a vodka soda but just soda um so i can make people feel more comfortable because i don't really love drinking too much or much at all um but I have really good memories with my friend Barry, who I've met through Get Kickball um, and going into that place and, you know, going into places where we feel safe. Um, I really look back fondly at those times, those times <laughs> that was like early 2020 before pandemic and 2019. Um, and, you know, if you want to move to Boston, if you're thinking about moving to Boston and you're watching this video, just know that there's going to be issues within our community, just like there are in many other places. Um, Boston is a lot smaller, though. And there's a, definitely a trend that I see in Boston within the career community is that people, you know, maybe they go to school in Boston, they stay in Boston for a little bit, but they ultimately leave. A lot of them leave and um, they go to L.A., Chicago, New York, um, kind of like a pit stop is Boston and then use that as a um, kind of like what's it called? I think to jump to the next city. Um, and that really, when you're getting older in Boston to your late 20s, early 30s, you're seeing a big gap because um, there's a ton of younger guys um, and gals. Um, but then you see a big gap. There's not a lot of people within the late 20s, early 30s demographic in Boston. So I feel a lot of people move to New York or move to LA or Chicago, um, which I feel like is very interesting to see. Um, you know, obviously it decreases the, the dating pool. I'm sorry if my light is changing um, because I'm using natural lighting as always, but that's really all I have for you guys in this video. I'm not really throwing a lot of shade at Boston and my, you know, gate experience in Boston um, in this video, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, I hope to film more videos, as I said, try to stay consistent uploading weekly. This week I'm uploading twice, um, probably going forward only once just because I this work is going to be very busy for me. Um, but I really appreciate you guys watching this video as always, sending lots of positive energy your way. Um, you know, click down below and subscribe. If you'd like to subscribe, it would be tremendous. We're at like over 280 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, and like this video if you like it and share it as well, if you'd like to share it with your friends. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.